Light. Light. Oh my goodness, the light. The return. The return of the prodigal son. The light is so bright. I see, I'm beginning to see, there's an image. In the distance, my father, my mother, calling. Here I am. Come. Come. Come back to me. I've been waiting for you. I've been hoping, thinking in my heart, my child, my beloved, return, return, return back to the Father's estate. Good afternoon, everybody. And those on Zoom, Zooming in, good afternoon. The light has come, blasts away the darkness. It is now time the divine child returns, has come back from whence he or she left. There was a knowing, a calling, a sense of longing that was in the heart. Calling, calling forward, come, come, return. The longing to be met, to be fulfilled for the pieces of self that we just heard about coming back into wholeness. And so in this edition, the third part of the prodigal returns, most of you had seen my speaking about parts one and two, which was the leaving of the prodigal, demanded his inheritance, her inheritance, came to ruin and longed to find an answer, a solution, a wholeness that his or her wandering following their own lead of the mind, a mind caught in what many mystics and Eastern teachers have called the illusion of the mind, maya, maya. And how and when do we come back from that? Lack of understanding and yet knowing that I'm watching myself, the observer and the observed, looking for solace. So in this return and celebration that we have is a birthright of joy. It's a celebration because it was one coming back home that was there from the beginning of time. So the Gnostics call it the return of the divine spark, that there was a story that we were all at one with the Father in heaven, and that there was an upset. The mind took hold and began leading. And there was a necessity for a return, a new experience, a new experience of light coming into wholeness and returning. So in this speaking today, I spoke, it was actually a year ago on Father's Day when I started this series, believe it or not, a year ago. <laughs> so we are coming full circle. And in this, we call this the return to the father's estate. Now I'm gonna pr propose to you a little conundrum. If I don't know what the estate is, how do I know what I'm returning to? What is gonna draw me back? What is the magic in coming back to something if I don't know what it is? 
So today we're going to take a look at how did that separation take place and what is the aspect of consciousness and self, little s self and capital S self, that causes the conundrum of feeling like we left and wanting to come back. So the estate, what is the estate? If we look in the dictionary, the state is titled this way. It is the sum of a person's assets, legal rights, interests, entitlements, entitlements to property of any kind. Well, in this case, in, it, in this particular talk, we're looking at consciousness. The consciousness, the consciousness that is with us day in and day out. But there still is a necessity to understand if I'm going to return, what am I returning to? What is my draw? So we're going to take a look at that through some other voices and declaring to us what was the draw that brought them back to a deeper sense of consciousness, a fuller sense of their person, of their rights, their entitlements. So one of the things that I took from the father's estate was in, what are the entitlements? In the father's estate, there were rights, there were opportunities, there was an authority that each of us have in directing the individuality in the personality of who we are. The individuality and the personality of who we are. And so we hear the voice, the still small voice in some cases. How many people have heard of Eckhart Tolle? He heard a still small voice after meditating for almost two years before that still small voice came to him. So we can say when that moment occurs, that aha moment, that the only relationship is with the self, the capital S self. And we have a personality self, we have an individuality self. And many times we find that those can be in conflict. And so we have to pull ourselves, we go and meditate. We go walk by a brook, we had a beautiful meditation. We look at the people in our lives, we try to pull together, who am I now? Where did I come from? What is this all about? And then we hear the still small voice, my child, my child, my beloved, come back, I'm waiting for you. Now, if I ask you to take a moment and think about if you had a break of a relationship with somebody and now it was a very dear relationship and you're going to come back to that person, you want to rejoin, you want to reconnect, there was some fondness, some deep love that was there that's drawing you, I'm going to be quiet for one minute and think what that might be to come back into that moment and think about joining with that person or persons. Now, as we come back from that moment, Let's look at the prodigal coming back. There could be a sense of condemnation. There could be a sense of, you scoundrel, what are you coming back here for? You left a long time ago. In this case, and today, we celebrate just the opposite. We celebrate the good news this is a father who says, my child, my child, my beloved, you have returned. Come, my arms are open wide. 
You were lost, and now you're found. You were dead, and now you're alive. Come and enjoy the fruit of the estate once again, that which you had from the beginning and has never lost, and never lost. And then we would say, well, how does one return? We return in our heart and intention, a choice of will. I choose to go back. I choose to reconnect. I choose to find that oneness that I remember that was so fond to me. And so in the Course of Miracles, we hear, and those that have studied the Course know, that the only power we have as an individual with a personality is choice. Choice. Choice to return. So the Course says this, I gladly make the sacrifice of fear. Of fear. No, that threat of condemnation, that threat of rejection, I make a sacrifice of fear. I get rid of it, I cut it away. One, I gladly make to give up all suffering, all sense of loss, anxiety, and doubt, I cut away. Father, I have searched, the Course in Miracles says, Father, I have searched in vain until I heard your voice directing me, calling me, now I would guide myself no more. I would look to you to find my way to freedom. And it is our memory of the Father's estate, that place of solace, that place of comfort. That's our entitlement. And it was said in the, in the reading, we have an entitlement to serenity, calmness, and peace. We return to that calmness and peace in this episode of the prodigal child coming back. And I'll getting close to having to close here. A paradox resolved, the paradox of the individual and the personality competing for direction of the self. I choose to trust your voice directs me, the sound, the ohm, calls me. The way to you is opening at last. Your holy son, your holy daughter, will not be lost to me. Your voice directs me, the way, the way is opening. We have now to just let go of the ego. Letting go of the ego is a choice and we choose to turn to our individuality and our uniqueness and reconnect. How many have seen the TV show called The Voice, the musical? It's all over, right? People going through their fear to stand on that stage. This case, The Voice is a voice of salvation. It sounded in my ears like a rushing of a mighty wind. And in that story in the Bible, there is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that falls on the disciples that are gathered in the upper room. Now let me give you a 21st century interpretation of that. That upper room is our consciousness. That voice, that still small voice speaks to our consciousness. Blessed is she, he, that believed, and we affirm the Father's calling, and there shall be a performance of those things which were told to us by the Lord, by that still small voice calling us back, there will be a performance. And that performance is a return and a reunification back to the Father's estate of wholeness, the mighty, the pieces of self come back together into a wholeness, and they are blessed, and you are blessed. Today, by the way, and I have to say, thanks to Al, I'm, this coat is as a result of Al giving me this 
two weeks ago for the celebration of Pentecost, which is the return of the Holy Spirit today. Thank you very much.